yeah, the any percent no wrong warp is a very interesting category. It's a new 1044.2, beating my run by, I think somebody said like 13 frames or something like that. So a little history about any percent no wrong warp is, I think it started with Andrew G with an 1101. Frezzy man, Freddie Anderson. His time was SDA timing, and I think it was a 1053. SDA timing, which is Speed Demo's archive timing, was when you gain control of the character. After he got that run, then I was the next person who stepped up. That's when I tried to go for the record after uh, Frezzy Man got the 1053. I had the record since 2015 or so, all the way up until Karua had beat my record with the Tass Bowser's Castle. The cool thing about that is that every time someone has come to claim the any percent no wrong warp record, they have done something new to add into the record to make it faster. The tool assisted run has done that world one, the world one that Ziku B is now using. Tass has been doing that for a long time. Something we've known, but I mean, there's no reason to add it in. It's kind of like overkill. And it was also an oversight on how much time it actually saved. So let's go ahead and um, actually I'll stop talking. Um, and we can go ahead and take a look. I think he resets here probably. He didn't get a movement of one or something. I think that's what he's going for. Movements of one um, in one one. Yes. Okay, so we have world one. Um, pretty sure everything's normal. I don't, I don't know if he did any kind of manipulation at the start here. Doesn't really look like it. It looks like he just kind of like started. Hopes for movements of one. He probably starts in the same same time frame every time. That's normally how Mario 3 works. Looks like he tries to get the turtle shell pretty quick. So it looks like he starts where he starts and then he like tries to go as fast as he can for this. Okay. Then we fast forward. Fast forward's too fast here. We do have to watch the end of the end of the levels. Okay, gets his movement of one. I think he got all, four movements of one. Um, where in my record I got two movements of one and two movements of two. So I had lost the second in world one. Sadly. Sadly, I lost the second in World 1. Um, but it's no biggie. World 1 is like... It's, world 1 is always World 1. It is whatever it is, right? It's always the same. So 1-1 one, one and 1-2 one, are the same. Nothing's changed. And this is where you're going to see a big difference in route change. Um, this is what I was talking about that was implemented quite a while ago, but not in any run. So he grabs the turtle shell. So he's going to throw the turtle shell. Let's go back a little bit. Uh, what makes this strategy kind of interesting is... The fact that you need to land on the shell and you need to hold left, but you have to keep P speed, but not bonk the shell with your body right there. You need to grab it and then keep P speed. Once you get your P speed back, you're gonna need to do kind of like a full jump. It's a very, very weird uh, shell throw. It's not overly hard. It's just kind of like, it's just kind of like awkward a little bit because you throw, you throw the shell low and you jump high, right? You can see the shell is being thrown here and you can see how much higher you're jumping and you can't quite see how that Zikabi is way faster than frame count impressive. Uh, I don't know what you're uh, asking about. Anyways, so he jumps higher and you can't even really see what you're throwing. I mean, uh, through practice, it, it should be pretty good. And then he grabs the leap right there and it allows him to do the fly fly tail swipe and then he can grab this. Now. Where this normally saves time is in the fortress. The fortress after this, instead of grabbing the leaf and jumping up, you can do that fly that you see in 100%. So let's just watch it in like full speed here. Boom, boom, yep, the throw. Nice, very nice. And then it, it almost seems like as soon as the Goomba passes, that's whenever you go. Right on, you grab the warp whistle. Right before the cloud is the toss. So he gets, oh, he gets a movement of two. So he didn't get all movements of one. Very, very close. I think he just said something about a very bad window um, in one three. gets a good fortress and then that is it so that is that is where the time save pretty much comes from and then as you can see he saves time on a split so now we are in some kind of known territory
I'm gonna turn them down a little bit just so that we're not talking over each other. So the, the typical thing that you want to happen in uh, the fortress here, or sorry, the tank brigade, is essentially you want no lag frames. And the biggest part that lags on the tank uh, is this spot right here. Not this part, the part, the, the little tank right after here. So what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a tail swipe. Yep, he's gonna grab. And then you essentially just kill all the bombs. You use them. I think you got a couple lag frames there. You watch the tank, the way the tank moves, if it like stutters, then you know you got a couple lag frames. So let's take a look here. Yeah, about right there when he killed it. So he probably got like one or two lag frames. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, okay, so here is the strategy that I was demonstrating today. So there is a strategy here where um, if you stand right here and you jump over the bullet that comes, you can actually duck jump and clip right in this section. And what the clipping does is it pushes you through the screen so you can be as close to the edge. If you watch Mario hold the right of the screen, you can see that there's kind of like an invisible wall there, right there. You can see Mario is as far to the right as he can be. He can't move right anymore. But if you use the clip right here, you can actually get pushed all the way to the right of the screen right here. And what that will allow you to do is that will allow you to save uh, the maximum amount of frames that you can save from that is 44 frames. 44 frames is over half of a second. Um, it, there's some consequences and it is pretty difficult, but I did successfully do it uh, a couple times today. So comparing uh, certain strategies with the world record, that is somewhere where you could theoretically save some time um, and the extra movement of one in world one. So we're looking at overall probably about a second so far of time that can be saved. Not, not too amazing, but that's still pretty good. Um, and then I'm guessing he got a backwards bro. Oh No, so he got forwards bro. So there was even a little bit more time here to save um, A lot of people ask about the boomerang and let me let me use this as a situation to be just a little bit more clear So people understand the chest in this mini game will not appear until the enemy and all the stuff are off the screen That includes the boomerang. So a good example of that is that when he throws the boomerang I don't have you, you don't have to kill the the hammer brother for like another second or two if you didn't want to because it doesn't matter like if you kill him right now you still have to wait for the boomerang to go off the screen before the chest appears so like you could probably have killed you could probably have killed the the enemy like a little bit of ways after that like if you wanted to kill the enemy right now you could kill him right now it wouldn't make any difference um, so where this can be a time save is if the hammer brother moves backwards over here and throws the boomerang well then the boomerangs on the screen a small like a lesser amount of time right so yeah so he moved forward and the boomerang made it all the way over here and then it's got to go all the way back if he was over if the boomerang bro was over here the boomerang would probably only go about right there and then back and that's where you'd save time it's about 0.3 but there's like five different patterns he can move backwards and like delay when he throws the boomerang and then that won't be much faster than him moving hey, hey, forward hey. and throwing the boomerang so um you kind of take what you can take you gotta take what you get i guess it's not not a whole lot you can do but that is um another little time save right there so we have uh tank clip boomerang bro moving backwards and one extra movement of one the whole all movements of one in world one i'm not particularly interested in as long as i get at least two movements of one then i'm like okay i guess so now he's gonna implement his own version of grabbing this power up which is pretty cool i was trying it today you get p speed and then you can fly duck into the power up and it kind of el eliminates having to do that stressful uh duck jump again i can definitely see that being comfortable for some people and not comfortable for others um I've been doing this for long enough where I don't particularly have to learn that. I don't have to worry about doing anything like that. But it's just somebody else's, like, sugar to the run. You know, somebody else's style, which is really cool. Um, now, normally there isn't really anything special about this level. But there is, in fact, another clip that I was working on today, which, again, will also save a little bit over uh, 0.5 seconds. And... It starts right here. Okay, it looks like Zikabee's gonna do it. I don't know if he's gonna go for P-Speed, but you do this, yep. 
You do that and you build P speed and what you want to do is you want to keep the P speed and clip into the side of this launcher right here. And I worked I worked on this today for at least a solid hour and a half and I was able to get pretty comfortable. Um, when you What's clip that? into the side of this, if you duck, you can do that same wall thing, right? You can see Mario's as far to the wall as he can be, right? You can't, he was unable to move any further, but you use the wall, the clipping to push you through as close as you can and that will save you another little bit of time so um yeah theoretically technically we're almost at two extra seconds of time save if you maximize um all time save which is uh which is pretty cool um not likely the odds of me getting both tank clips in one run it will happen but it's not going to be like a thing that happens all the time but i don't know i've only ever tried to work on them today and i've never even tried to get p-speed in the tank before in my life so, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm capable of with that. Okay, no bonks on the overworld map. He got no hands. Um, he's happy with his world ones, so he's obviously excited. Um, uh, my record was a 1044.4, so he's he's pretty. He's on the line of world record pace right here. So, um, and I think he messed up in Bowser's castle. So, so far it's looking pretty good. Um, if you can figure out a way to get P speed in this level and clip at the end, then oh my gosh, like you deserve a medal. Because I don't think it's possible. Intentional bonk? I, I, I didn't see him do a bonk anywhere. Uh, he might have, but I've been a little more focused on the history and strategies, kind of the breakdown of the run and, and what, we're, what we're looking to see in the future. Um, yeah. So he lost a little bit of time there. You'd, you'd, you'd be you'd be wondering why he lost time there. Hey, hey, MFP. Um, and the reason is probably the boomerang bro. His PB of 1044.04, the boomerang bro probably moved backwards. So that's a good good indication to show you how much time save and loss just from that boomerang bro is. I mean, that's, if, if who knows? Like if he didn't get forward bro in his last run and then he got it this run, he could have saved even more time, right? So it's. It's awesome. Odds are we're going to see very, very um, normal strategies for 8-1 and 8-2. Uh, we're going to see the normal strategy here. The shot there. Turn back there. Turn back there. That's right. Okay, yeah. So this is like... This 8-1 has been like this ever since I had stepped foot into the any percent no wrong warp. Because Frezzy Man didn't do uh, the fire shot. Let me go back so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Frezzy man didn't do the fire shot at the bottom. Uh, it's like it's not necessarily a single frame fire shot, but the but the old run when I was first getting my hands dipped into any percent no wrong work back in like 2000 I think it had to have been like 2013 or something 2013 14 there was no bottom shot here. Even I used to jump up. It used to be jumping up here. You used to jump up here and then jump across and you'd get your P speed in the tiny. The tiny corridor but now it's like so common uh to do your shot here this used to be in any percent no wrong warp like like how it still is now but it also wasn't in warpless or 100 percent. that's how like awkward this shot used to be like how how far we've come as mario runners like we used to do this in any percent no wrong warp but n we'd never do it in warpless and 100 percent. and now everyone does this like i every runner except for beginner runners do this shot now and it's it's crazy that they do it that's just the way it is it's crazy how far we've come so pretty standard let's see what kind of turn back he does at the end here very standard turn back i, I don't think that that was like the best turn back you could have done odds are you might if you want to be more risky you you might be able to save one or two frames <laughs> maybe right the card cycles every eight frames and you you can cycle from mushroom to flower to stars so um, there's there's lots of lots of frames to be saved. He does the up route And then nice he runs down the hill There we go you get the hill speed uh, He probably has he probably has like four different ways that he does the end section there Which most any percent no wrong warp runners should have um, So here's a time save on non-task castle bowser strats 
is if you just simply don't use a star in this level and this was not a known thing in the past everyone always thought if you just use a star and jump through all the death waffles like how could you be any slower but just simply going to the inventory equipping a star and then going back out of inventory and entering the level makes it slower than if you just entered the level and kind of dodged the dodge the death waffles here and there with little turnbacks it, it's crazy how much oversights beginning and early strats can can make a difference on like new age runners and new age strats and stuff like that it's crazy so in this run because he doesn't do tasks bowser's castle like he just doesn't even use the star so that's one full inventory menuing time save and it's it's essentially this jump right here and you can see that this jump is very what's what's frame advanced on the Oh, no, that's... Yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, so you can see the jump here is, like, extremely tight. And you see how tight that is? But by doing that and then doing a quick turn back, running off, jumping, and doing that, like, that just makes using the star a little bit slower. And then conveyor P-speed. Very nice. Yeah, this isn't YouTube. Right on. So he does the standard. He does a he does a very nice like this room's really good. There's really not any time save, especially like once you hit the P switch, there's uh nothing you can do. Um but he does the turn left. Now, I I was told by Bismuth that that was slower, but I think in my scenario of my record what I did was slower I think what Zikubi did was uh, slightly faster there but it all depends on the P switch and what what you're comfortable with like the fortress after the P switch eh, it doesn't really have much variances but if you don't get that early P speed boost there's not much you can do I try to get P speed in this level and like keep it and find a way to clip it it would honestly be a nightmare it, it would be a nightmare it, like I don't even know how far I got and you'd have to keep it and then clip into that and it just I don't think it would work so one crucial thing missed in this run is not doing Bowser's castle and that is something where he definitely could have benefit um, from this run this this run can still be beaten by a couple seconds because Bowser's castle clip basement strat was not used now he gets the he he said he got very consistent with the um, elevator clip there was something he said he was doing like certain it was like a certain jump that allowed him to do it and getting that clip for him pretty much sealed the world record i mean the one-up clip could have got him and it kind of did like it was it looked very close like if you watch look at that you can see uh that's hard for you guys to see but mario is just not on the ledge there but he does get on and he makes it so that was really good that was a really nice clutch um and then uh p speed statue room very nice nor that's normally what you would definitely want to see in a run warpless and 100 percent oh missed the fireball i know what that life's like bowser gave a bowser actually gave him a pretty bad pattern So he, he definitely could have, like, I think we could have seen probably a 1043, maybe if the boomerang bro moved backwards, and I don't know, really. Because he didn't make many mistakes in the actual run. Um, but yeah, so we got a 10, 1044.19, so it's essentially a 1044.2, whereas the world record previous was a 1044.4, and that's what I have right now. And that is what I have to beat. But I'm still probably going to do Bowser's Task Castle. So um, as long as I implement the World One, uh, the World One strategies, which luckily I already know how to do them. I've already learned them. Um, and maybe, hopefully, maybe hopefully I get uh, Tank Two Clip because Tank Two Clip has no punishment. I practiced that one a lot today, and there was. There was definitely no uh, punishment for tank two clips. Thank goodness. I made I made a mistake in eight two in my record, a, a, a slight slip up, but I was able to keep P speed. Like we're talking like maybe ten frames lost or some crap, something silly. 
something really silly um, in A2. Um, and I need to update my World 1. I also got two movements of 1 and two movements of 2, uh, which is very nice. So there is a little bit of time save there. And then I'm going to try and do the, um, the tank clips. Most likely in the Navy. I'm probably going to do Navy before I'll do 8-1. Navy seems like 8 tank 1 is easier to get in the clip, but harder to execute after the clip. An 8, an eight Navy is harder to get the clip, but easier to execute after the clip. So, um, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But we, we timed it today, and if I can get a good pattern compared to my run, there could almost be a second time save in the tank just for me, just, just with the clip. Um, I have to get backwards, boomerang, bro. <laughs> Zicka B with his, his little dolls or whatever. All right, so his waifu. I am really happy that somebody had broken it. Um, I'm really happy that it was done without uh, Bowser's Castle. Um, it, it, it excites me to come back and like try again. I normally like to leave my records until somebody beats them and then I come back. So I'm very excited um, to actually come back and... Um, it, it kind of puts me into like gear. It pushes me to like grind and do more and push myself further I mean, that's what that's what I did with Karu all the time, right? Like if Karu didn't keep beating my records I probably would have maybe got like a little lazy with it Maybe not have grind it down as much But like when somebody works hard and somebody comes and beats your hard work You you don't want the hard work to go to waste by letting it just get toppled, right? So you just like that's what you that's what you do in life Like you just keep you just keep grinding and going and going so that's that's what I'm going to be doing, and I uh, we've put some practice in. But what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do some runs. Um, I'm going to do some runs to try and add in. Oh, look at my sum of best segments too, guys. Ooh, 1040. 